We are here again. We are here to once again remind those who continue to ignore the plight of the victims of man-made earthquakes that these victims will not go away and that the number of victims and the amount of damage is growing exponentially without any mention by the oil and gas industry of reparations. Last night, as it may be, as many of you know, a 4.5 quake struck near the Pawnee area, an area hard hit by man-made earthquakes. Today we have speakers from the Pawnee area whom I want to acknowledge, uh, along with some other citizens who have come today, to share information about their experiences to date with these damaging earthquakes. I have with me today Mayor Brad Sewell of Pawnee, and we also have Bruce Pratt, President of the Pawnee Nation. The stakeholders responsible for causing these man-made earthquakes are being sheltered from their responsibility by Governor Fallon and the present legislature. Last week, I held an interim study to look into recycling the wastewater produced when oil companies frack our land. This wastewater, when injected back into the ground, causes earthquakes. Professor Todd Hallahan, PhD from OSU, presented information at my interim study last week to reveal just how long the engineering community has known how to create an earthquake. He actually said that we are pretty good at creating earthquakes. We have known full well that when we construct a dam, for example, and attempt to displace and contain volumes of water behind that dam, an earthquake is likely to occur. We also know full well that after fracking, disposing of wastewater produced from fracking by way of high pressure injection can also cause earthquakes. We've known this about wastewater injection full well, at least since the 1970s. So how could any gas and oil company set out to develop, create, and market a product that they know full well will harm our land, our property, our water, and potentially our very lives when earthquakes are known to occur? One of the longstanding federal protections that has kept us safe and distinguishes us to this day from other countries is our set of U.S. consumer product safety laws. The tobacco industry violated these laws and has paid a heavy price for doing so, along with drug companies, toy manufacturers, and the auto industry, and so on. Thankfully, we have seen some major change for the better as a result. In the case of oil and gas companies, it seems as if they, if they believe that they are above the law because the product they manufacture is so vital to our way of life, to our, oh, I'm sorry, because they, the product they manufacture is so vital to our way of life. Petroleum is very important. I am in complete support of the oil and gas industry. But it's the irresponsible way in which some of these companies have chosen to ignore the science and ignore the potential for damage to Oklahomans by injecting millions of gallons of wastewater under our homes and businesses. I know of not one person who has been harmed by this activity who has been repaid a penny for their loss by anyone from the industry. It took Governor Fallon and her teammates months, if not years, to admit to Oklahomans that oil and gas disposal wells were the cause of life-threatening earthquakes. At my interim study last week, Ms. Arnella Carges, who I've known for many years and who once worked for this institution, who is now Executive Vice President of the Oklahoma Oil and Gas Association, asked how we could possibly entertain the idea of wastewater recycling. She said that the industry is currently injecting billions of gallons of wastewater, and it would be impractical, impractical for the industry to make impractical for the industry to be made to recycle that much wastewater. Ms. Cards has also stated even though recyclers are suffering, are offering to lower their cost for recycling, that recyclers are offering to lower their cost for recycling to two dollars per barrel or below, it's just too much to ask. Ms. Carges also revealed something else in her remarks. She stated that those drillers pulling up oil from the Mississippi line play are also pulling up between 50 and 100 barrels of wastewater to get one barrel of oil. So, those drilling in the Mississippi line, which is just one of the oil and gas plays in this state, and apparently one of the least productive, by the way, is yielding an ocean of wastewater for little return. If we could recycle just the wastewater from the Mississippi line, we prevent many, many earthquakes. Or if we placed a moratorium on drilling that play, we'd have no need to recycle so much wastewater. In all of this discussion at the interim study, there were no voices 
from the industry contributing to the subject of property loss and the reparation for Oklahomans, and that they are the only people who could address that subject, and they aren't offering a word of consolation, much less any offer of remuneration monies for the victims to make repairs to their homes and businesses. Unfortunately, we have, unfortunately, we have term limits in Oklahoma, and my 12-year term ends this very month. So we'll not be in a position to advance policy from here at the Capitol. But I have some policy proposals that I would like to offer to any current or incoming member of the House and Senate, as well as to the governor. As I said in my interim study last week, oil and gas companies must recycle. It is not an option anymore. Recycling is the answer to ending Oklahoma's seismic activity. We have several companies recently, presently recycling in other states, and we have at least one ready to build a plant in Oklahoma. This recycling company must, I'm sorry, this recycling company just needs a commitment from oil and gas companies that they will enter into at least a five-year contract, and in return, the recycler will drop the price to accommodate the Oklahoma market to at least or below $2 a barrel. Oil and gas companies have always used many excuses that recycling is too expensive, but with re recent pricing developments, there simply is no excuse. I told you all that today I would have policy recommendations for those, for those who will come after me. So I have several. My first, my first proposal that I've crafted is designed to address the issue of the massive quantity of the brine water coming out of the Mississippi Lime. I am suggesting that those who pers persist in drilling within the Mississippi Lime, who are presently pulling up millions of gallons of brine water, for so little energy benefit be required to purchase a separate special permit. The permit will come at a cost with those extra fees used to help build and help fund recycling efforts. The permit should also come with restrictions, making recycling a portion of the brine mandatory. In creating a formula for determining the number of mandatory gallons to be recycled when drilling in the Mississippi Lime, drillers should be required to recycle every gallon that exceeds the current per gallon average being pumped from other oil field plays in the state. Two, it shouldn't be the responsibility of oil and gas companies alone to cover all of the costs for recycling. We could provide these divided costs among all those who benefit. The solution is to form what I have called for many years on other projects, a P3 or public-private partnership. Question, what would such a funding model for a wastewater recycling P3 look like? and from where might we find funding. Here are a few sample ideas. It's not just Oklahomans, but every American who benefits from the gas and oil produced here in Oklahoma. Because Oklahoma has been productive, has been proactive in the production of domestic oil, our nation is now nearly energy independent of foreign oil. So federal tax dollars derived from those Americans consuming Oklahoma energy could and should be considered a possible source of funding for a portion of our P3 model. Oklahoma, as an energy state, must establish a sovereign wealth trust fund. Oklahoma is among nine states to draw more than 5% of its revenue from severance taxes and leaves us in a volatile position, as we have seen over the last several legislative sessions. But this fund, such a fund, could stabilize our funding base. A sovereign wealth trust fund is set up much as my, as, as my trust fund to include the Commission of the Land Trust or the Tobacco Settlement Endowment Trust, from such a fund, we could draw contributions for our wastewater recycling P3. A fuel tax, a fuel tax increase in Oklahoma could also be a source of funding to help with the P3. So, just for comparison, presently, Oregon, which has nearly identical population of Oklahoma, now has a 30 cent per gallon tax. Kentucky has a 29.4 percent tax, Arkansas 21. 5 cents. Tennessee and Louisiana are both at 20 cents, Idaho at 25 cents, and so on, with diesel taxes usually running a little higher. Oklahoma has, Oklahoma, let me repeat this, Oklahoma hasn't raised its tax since the early 80s and remains standing at 16 cents for gasoline and 13 cents for diesel fuel. There is no way for Oklahoma to do much in the way of transportation infrastructure or to fund innovations such as a gas and oil related wastewater recycling when the tax remains at 16 cents. Let's talk about adjustments to tax incentives for oil and gas and the oil and gas deregulation and how some adjustments might benefit an idea of the proposed P3 recycling effort. 
the Oklahoma, Oklahoma's oil men, the industry itself, scored a victory two years ago when state lawmakers in the body of the state legislature voted to keep in place some of the lowest taxes on oil and gas production in the United States, a break worth $470 million in fiscal year 2015 alone. I am suggesting perhaps some of that money from tax credits could be reinvested by oil and gas companies in wastewater recycling via P3. For my third recommendation, I'm asking Governor Fallon to support the creation of, a, of legislation to establish a bipartisan task force to begin the process of laying out statewide plan for instituting recycling wastewater in our state. Oil and gas, number four, oil and gas companies should voluntarily establish a reparation fund for Oklahoma victims of man-made earthquakes. The insurance companies are, in my opinion, being unfairly made the scapegoats here. Oklahoma had virtually zero earthquakes when fracking and in, before fracking and injection. The likelihood of quakes over three being caused by anything other than frac injected salt water injection wells can be estimated based upon historical data. And it is clear that it, it is clear that today's quakes are simply not likely to be from natural causes, but by aggravation of natural formations to cause damaging man-made quakes from high pressure injection. Five, high risk insurance companies should be provided incentives to write homeowner policies in Oklahoma to cover man-made earthquakes and oil and gas companies that are issued permits to frack and inject in Oklahoma should be required in some capacity to indemnify that coverage in the form of insurance premium coverage subsidies. Six, and many have suggested a five cent per barrel surcharge. Five cents per barrel surcharge to be paid into a reparation fund by oil and gas producers who frack and inject. Uh, most of the people watching this have seen uh, over the last month uh, the earthquake on Labor Day, and that was unprecedented for, for our community. Uh, we had damage down on the town square that you've seen. Uh, one of the most visibly damaged buildings uh, is on the National Register of Historic Places. I've talked with that owner many times, including uh, this morning, and he's still trying to work out the cost estimates for his building, uh, trying to see whether it makes sense for him more financially to uh, rebuild the structure or, or tear it down. He doesn't know. We don't know the answer to that yet, but that would represent a very visible part of the defining characteristics of our historic town square, Something, some place that people come from all over the state for events, a beautiful site, part of our beautiful cityscape that would be destroyed as a result of these earthquakes. And that's just, that's just one. We have people from all over the community. Uh, we've had many people come forward with pictures. I had pictures that were put in my hands uh, as I was leaving this morning of damage to a local church. There are people that have suffered. Uh, I understand from recent news articles that of all the damage in our area, there's been a $24,000 payout total to everybody who, is, uh, who has been affected by this. And uh, as Representative Morissette noted, uh, this has been a sharp increase over the last several years, and the increase in earthquakes uh, has occurred faster than the infrastructure uh, in place, insurance, uh, federal and state disaster relief, faster than anybody uh, could have predicted. And as a result, you have many people falling through the cracks. Uh, in addition to the names that our police chief has been collecting in Pawnee, uh, we've had many people who have just said that uh, they haven't even bothered reporting because they already know their policy doesn't cover. They already suspect that uh, they aren't going to be able to find help. And uh, so they're going to have damage, you know, in the thousands of dollars that is not covered. And uh, these are people who are not wealthy, uh, people that have uh, very limited means in which to uh, repair damages and, and their suffering. And I know President Pratt is here of the Pawnee Nation. Uh, the Pawnee Nation and the city have, have worked closely uh, since Labor Day. We had an event that was uh, jointly sponsored by the Pawnee Nation, the city of Pawnee, and uh, the Sierra Club just this last weekend. We filled a large community center, the Rome Chief Building in Pawnee, with people from all over the state interested in learning more about the causes of earthquakes and uh, what options we might have. Uh, I talked with uh, State Senator A.J. Griffin yesterday about the possibility of having an additional meeting in Pawnee uh, in, the, in the weeks and months to come uh, that will focus on a lot of the issues that were brought forward uh, this morning, a lot of the different potential 
options other than injecting wastewater into the ground because uh, we know that uh, the oil industry isn't going away. We all depend on oil. I drove my car here. We all have plastics. We all know how central it is to our modern society. And if we're going to have oil production, we need to figure out a way to do it that doesn't damage uh, people's properties, that doesn't cause uh, unexpected earthquakes. I want to thank uh, Representative uh, Richard Morissette for uh, having this press conference and for all of those who are in attendance. Uh, as, as was stated, I am the president of the Pawnee Nation and um, we have uh, sustained uh, considerable damage there on our facilities. Uh, right now we are in the process of, of uh, moving um, here pretty quick, probably out of our administration building, which affects uh, uh, our finance, our IT, um, our, our administration, uh, all, all of those. And we're going to have to move to other facilities because of the damage caused by the earthquake. We've had our uh, tax building, which was uh, severely damaged, and we had to move them. And uh, so we are located on the old boarding school there uh, on the Pawnee Nation. And we have inhabited those buildings for uh, many decades now. Uh, but the earthquake that did occur on Labor Day really uh, damaged uh, not only our buildings and facilities, uh, but uh, damaged many uh, properties uh, owned by our uh, Pawnee citizens. Uh, Pawnee has um, a population of around 800 there around uh, the Pawnee community. And um, like uh, the mayor said earlier, uh, a lot of our people um, don't understand the, the uh, processes for uh, claims and things. Um, we have not been paid a cent by anybody. Uh, we're still uh, in discussion and whatever that means. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we, like everybody else, we're, we're waiting. We're waiting for, for monies. We're waiting for help um, to, to uh, come to, to uh, our tribe so that we can uh, move forward in, in our tribal government. Um, it's been about a year ago that the Pawnee Nation, that we uh, voted on a resolution to have a fracking moratorium on uh, our Pawnee lands. Um, as, as has been stated earlier today, we, we are not um, against the oil and gas industry. Um, we, we are all um, users of, of those products and, and, um, and things. However, uh, the Pawnee Nation, we just simply said, let's, let's just hold on. Let's just wait a minute and, and uh, let's figure this thing out, uh, the science and things. And, um, and uh, the earthquakes really gave a, a lot of fuel to, to all of that. And, and uh, we, we simply just, just, just want things to, to be better. Uh, what, what is the most concerning for us um, to go along with the earthquakes is uh, the damage to the water, the water resources that are the, under our lands and, and the aquifers and, and uh, the, 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 the amount of water, the millions and millions and um, billions of, of gallons of water that uh, will never go back into um, drinkable uses and things. So I believe that they can do a lot more. Uh, the insurance department is uh, legally and constitutionally required to assist Oklahomans in those issues and regulate the industry in a fair and, and, and balanced manner. We've all heard that term before, haven't we? Uh, again, you know, politics is what politics is, and influence is what influence is. And I suspect one of the reasons we're getting very little uh, movement out of the insurance department is politics. It is my hope that in the future, whether it's the Pawnee Nation folks up in Pawnee, the citizens of this state are in charge of this issue. If enough people are energetic enough to contact their elected officials, the governor in particular, the governor in particular, to make policy decisions that are our new age, I get it, that the industry as a whole, not there are many companies that are open to these ideas, but the industry as a whole, just whether it was the automakers, tobacco industry, et cetera, et cetera. This is 2016, almost 2017. It's not 1964 anymore. We need to move in a new way to drill and produce commodities. But we must do it in a safe and environmental manner that will not jeopardize homes and, more importantly, the lives. And I've been on this earth a long time. I somehow suspect that we have got the bugle warning 
These earthquakes are a warning. Something greater is coming if we don't act. The time to act is now, and I pray that some of these elected officials, maybe some of the new ones coming in, will have the courage to act of their convictions and do what's right for the people of Oklahoma. In 2012, I started noticing damage from um, earthquakes. Um, through these last few years, the damage has mounted time after time, earthquake after earthquake, which I have had multiple, multiple earthquakes in, at my home um, and around it. Um, this is really hard for me to say, um, but I could be your grandma. I'm a great grandmother. There are many, many people like me. And you heard Representative Morissette say, there are many people with nowhere to turn. Our state government has turned a blind eye to us. They act like we do not exist. Oil and gas has turned a blind eye to us. They act like we do not exist. I want them to know we do exist. We are out here. My house, I have multiple fractures in my foundation through the pad. I have inside and outside fractures up my walls. I have buckled rafters in my roof. I've had multiple water pipes broken. Um, the damage goes on and on. The outbuildings where I am, my storm shelter is no longer safe. And at this point, my house is no longer safe. And I've been told I really need to move out of it and vacate my premises. Now, we give a lot of tax incentives to oil and gas. I pay my taxes. I'm paying my taxes on a house that is ready to fall on the ground. Where is my state? Where is my governor? Where are my representatives? I've only seen two, and that's Representative Morissette and Representative Williams that have even took a minute to listen. We're hurting out here. I have neighbors. Not only do we suffer the damages, but we also suffer the pressure of oil and gas. I have one neighbor who they drilled a um, injection well 50 feet from their fence. The gentleman now is ill all the time. I went with a, a, uh, F, a FLIR, FLIR camera crew. That well is leaking so much gas. It's not funny. They have for sale signs on their house. I went with a French television crew and they said, Oh, well, see if you can get them to talk to us. And they said, no, because if we talk to them, we might not sell our house. If we talk to them, gas and oil might know. I have another neighbor where um, survey for gas and oil trespassed on her land. She called the sheriff's department, who quickly told them that they could not trespass on her land. The result was the next day a representative of gas and oil went to her home, big guy, as she tells me, over six foot, way over six foot, probably 260, 280, got in her face and yelled at her, and yelled at her. This is the treatment my neighbors get from gas and oil. And you wonder why no one wants to speak of their damages. That's why, that is why no one is speaking about they're frightened. And I know that may be uncomfortable for some of you, but that is the truth. Um, I had this thing all written out here of many things that I wanted to say. Um, I have a large group that I'm the head of in Oklahoma with over 5,000 members. One of my members wrote me, Jackie, what do I do? There's sludge on top of 
my mother-in-law's well. They just drilled next to her property. What do I do? By the way, she was diagnosed with stomach cancer this morning. Where is the governor? Where is the legislature? What does he do? What do I do? I had no earthquake insurance. What do I do? This past June, I lost my husband. I will guarantee you that the stress of all this made that happen much earlier than it ever should have happened. So I'm emotional. I feel like I've been abandoned. Where is the government for the people of Oklahoma? Not industry, the people of Oklahoma. Where are they? This will just, I'm gonna share this, what happened this week. I'm quite uh, active online. I was online and we were talking about the water quality. Someone had wrote a piece about the water quality. And so I went in and said something. Immediately I was attacked. And they said, we know where you live. Big Brother's watching you. This is no joke. I look in windows. In fact, we look in windows. I had some good response, and I thought, who is this nut? You know, who is this? So I go look. I want you to know it was a field representative for Senator Imhoff. What does that say? What does that say? I have nothing to leave my children anymore. Gas and oil took it. I don't have a husband to share my retirement with. Gas and oil took it. I do not have a home. Gas and oil took it. I've been feeling earthquakes for a number of years, and um, I've lived in California for a while. I was in the Loma Prieta earthquake that was a 6.9, so I'm familiar with uh, damage that earthquakes can cause, so I bought earthquake insurance, and this was fairly early on. I, I don't remember if I bought it in 2013 or 2014. Um, I started getting a lot of damage to my house. I was getting, and this is stuff that I consider to be nuisance damage. It's like cracks in the drywall. You know, everybody's seeing cracks in the drywall. The uh, doors are sticking. I knew that my floor was uneven. One time I dropped a Coke on my floor and instead of puddling up, it ran underneath the cabinets. I knew that there was serious problems with that as well. I didn't understand how bad it was. I thought it was all nuisance damage. One of my toilets uh, started having a leak from a cracked tank. That has nothing to do with earthquakes. So the house was built in the 70s, it was the original toilet. You have to replace toilets every once in a while. So I had a uh, plumber come in and I asked him to replace both of my toilets um, because I wanted to get uh, you know, an upgrade, the uh, low water and that type of thing. He went into the guest room, took that one out, replaced it. Then he went into the main bathroom, took that toilet out and said, I can't replace this. Your floors, floors are so damaged the toilet won't seal. That was in April of, um, 2015. I knew at that point that I had to file a uh, claim with my insurance. So uh, the insurance folks came over. We had an engineer come over. Um, something I want to say, it's a little bit off topic, but I want to make sure I say this. My insurance company paid for the engineer so we could get the, uh, a definition of how much damage I have. People like Jackie, uh, lots of people, if the insurance is um, refusing coverage or they can't afford insurance for whatever, they can't even get the damage to their homes defined because mine was defined by that engineer paid by the uh, insurance company. It costs about $500. Most people can't afford that. When he came over, the insurance report showed that I had uh, not only the nuisance damage that I was talking about, but something else that's really insidious. My uh, house sits on a stem wall of concrete blocks, and he showed me where there's little teeny tiny cracks that you almost can't see, and he told me that 40% of my foundation was separated from its mortar. I have photographs of that if you want to see, and that's something I really want to let people know. A lot of people think, oh, well, I'm not getting any damage. Mine was so small. Please look at my photographs afterwards. I'll stay around. Um, the estimate for doing the repairs, they were going to have to take everything out of my house. 
They're going to have to take the floors out, all the cabinets, bathtubs, everything. The only thing left standing in the house was interior walls and exterior walls. Uh, they estimated $74,000 to repair it and three months of work. It ended up being $106,000 in repair work and seven months worth of work. My house is only worth about $120,000. I have three acres, barns, and the house. $106,000 is insane. That's just ridiculous. But that's what it took, and it did take seven months to do it. Um, I was really, really lucky to have insurance. Right now, most people do not have insurance. They can't get it, or the insurance is uh, being denied. A uh, concern that I have is um, Governor Fallon, when asked what should homeowners do, her answer is get insurance. That's a reactive uh, solution. We need proactive solutions. We cannot have this reactive stuff. That doesn't help. Insurance isn't helping me. I still had to pay not only the insurance um, premiums, but my deductible. I was out of my house for seven months, which the insurance paid for, by the way. <laughs> I was, again, extraordinarily lucky. I am not at all typical. Um, Representative Morissette, there's something that I wanted to add when you're talking about policy changes. Right now, there is a law in Oklahoma that says if I sue the oil companies and I lose, I have to pay their attorneys. Guess Pe who makes that law? The legislature does. Yes, the legislature makes that law. The law was a, in, originally intended for people in automobile accidents. Those are people who are on equal level, right? It wasn't intended for a homeowner and the oil and gas company. Um, Kansas has a similar law. And that one specifies that this is for people who are in automobile accidents. We need to change that law in Oklahoma to specify this is for automobile Maybe accidents. Maybe the governor will have that in her state of the state this year. Yeah, she won't even say earthquake in her state of the state. Um, I had two other things I wanted to say real quickly. We don't really understand the um, extent of damage that we're having. There's nothing that's going together and saying, where is this damage happening? People are afraid to say anything. There is a um, professor at the University of Colorado in Boulder. Her name is Dr. Abby Lyle. And she is doing uh, research. She's um, a professional engineer. And they're doing research on the damage of multiple, the cumulative damage of multiple low energy earthquakes. My house wasn't taken down by a single earthquake. Pawnee probably had a lot of you know, more stuff like that. But you're probably also getting a lot of cumulative damage as well. And, and mine snuck up on me. I had no idea it was that bad. I think there's probably lots of those. So if people can send their information to Dr. Lyle, she needs photographs, she needs to know where this is, engineering reports if you have it. I live about eight miles northwest of Pawnee, uh, within a mile of the epicenter of the 5.8 quake. And we sustained uh, in our house uh, uh, significant damage. Uh, there's not uh, hardly a wall on my in my house that doesn't have a, a huge crack somewhere on it. Um, uh, we've had uh, my my front porch has dropped down uh, about eight inches from the uh, uh, entryway, which was flush before. Um, I. I'm not against, not opposed to the oil and gas industry. In fact, uh, I've worked in the oil and gas industry for 30 years. My, my, my dad worked in the industry, my grandpa, my uncles, my great uncles uh, all worked in the industry, industry. So we understand and we, we understand how important the oil and gas industry is to the state of Oklahoma. Um, I would just like to appeal to uh, industry leaders uh, to take this seriously. Um, I think one of the best things that the industry ever did was to create the OERB um, uh, to handle some of the, uh, the problems that, uh, that the industry uh, had incurred and created and uh, took responsibility for. And, uh, and I'd like to see them uh, step up. And uh, I know that there are a lot of great minds in the oil and gas industry. Uh, I'm afraid, though, that until our legislature does something to force the industry to uh, recognize uh, that they've got to dispose of this water, this wastewater, in a responsible manner, uh, that it won't get done. And I know they can do it uh, once, once the legislature uh, uh, forces them to. I, I'm, I'm sure that there are plenty of great minds that can come up with plenty of, reason, of ways uh, to accomplish uh, responsible 
uh, injection of wastewater or prop, uh, responsible disposal of wastewater.